Chapter six, survival of the fittest. Mom, said Ivy, can you tie this knot? Ivy's mom was working in her office. Click, click, her fingers jumped along her keyboard. Hmm, she said. Mom, Ivy said, what? Can you tie this knot? Yes, said I Ivy's mom. Quickly, she leaned over and pulled on the string wrapped around Ivy's wrists. She tied the ends in a knot. Thanks, said Ivy. She and Bean turned to leave. Bye. Hmm, said Ivy's mom, her fingers beginning to jump again. They walked down the hall to the front door. Walking with their hands tied in front of them was weird. It made their stomachs stick out. Wait, called Ivy's mom. She poked her, her head out of her office. Can I ask you why you've tied your hands together? It's a global warming idea, said Ivy. Oh, said Ivy's mom. What do you mean? Well, you know how lots of animals are in trouble from global warming, said Ivy. Her mom nodded. They'd have a better chance if humans weren't so powerful. If humans weren't as strong and smart and stuff, added Bane. So we tied up our hands to make it more fair, said Ivy. We thought about hitting ourselves on the head so that we'd be dumber, said Bean. But then we thought that would hurt, Ivy said. So we picked hands instead. If we can't move our hands, we'll be weaker, said Bean. And then the animals can take over. They could take over the world from the people. They could take over the world from the people, said Ivy. It's a very interesting idea, said Ivy's mom. She smiled. What are you going to do now? We're going to go outside and let the animals see that we're weak, said Ivy. We may be eaten, said Bean, but we don't mind. It's for science, said Ivy. That's definitely a good cause, said Ivy's mom. She didn't seem very wor worried, so Ivy said, if we do get eaten, bring our, so our skeletons to the science fair. Will do, said Ivy's mom, and went back inside her office. They stood in Ivy's front yard, trying to show the animals that they were weak. Science fair. Come and get us, called Bean. But the animals must have been napping because it was Katie from down the block who answered. She stepped out of a camellia bush and stared at them. What are you doing, she asked. Global warming, said Bean. We're fighting it, said Ivy. We're giving the animals a chance to. Katie interrupted. You want to play bad orphanage? Katie had changed a lot. When she was little, she only wanted to play house. No thanks, said Ivy. We're working on a science project. Just wait right here, said Katie. She crawled into the camellia bush and backed out with a jump rope. I'm the mean orphanage ma matron that you ha and you're the orphans, she said. No, said Ivy again. We're doing a science project. Bean didn't say anything. She loved bad orphanage. She loved being the cool matron who, who fed crusts to the orphans. But Katie had her own plan. Katie was, was stringing her jump rope through her tied hands. You're my orphan prisoners, she said, and, and cackled a cool orphanage matron cackle. Cry and scream, she ordered them in her normal voice. Now wait just a cotton-picking moment here, began Bean. If she, didn't, if she didn't get to be a cool matron, she didn't want to play. This is a science project, yelled Ivy. Katie paid no attention to them. One thing about Katie hadn't changed. She had always been a tough cookie. March, she bellowed and pulled on, on her end of the rope. No, said Ivy. March or I'll cook you alive, shrieked Katie. She yanked on the rope again and Ivy and Bean almost fell over. Across the street, Sophie W came out 
on her porch and saw Ivy and Bean's tied hands. What you doing? She called. These are my orphan prisoners, hollered Katie. Come on, you can be the other cruel matron. You're stopping scientific progress, I yelled. Right, yelled Bean. This is about global warming. Wrong, yelled Katie. This is about orphans. Sophie W. ran around Pancake Court and joined Katie dragging them along the sidewalk. Ivy and Bean twisted and turned their hands, but they couldn't undo the knots on the rope. Now let's dump them in the orphanage basement, Sophie said. She pointed at Katie's front yard. That's the orphanage basement. And then let's give them the rack, suggested Katie. Hey, yelled Ivy and Bean together. Oh, don't worry, said Sophie. We won't hurt you for real. Katie cackled. She might hurt them for real. <laughs> she tied them tightly to her porch railing. Let's get another rope, she said, so we can stretch them. Yeah, said Sophie W. Together they ran off laughing. Boy, said Bean, that Katie is a wacko. Let's get out of here. They wriggled their hands trying to loosen the ropes. It was too bad that Ivy's mom tied, tied knots so well. You know, said Ivy, this is exactly what Dotsie might, must feel like. Bean looked at the rope that connected them to the railing. Isn't this what we were trying for? We're weak and we can't do anything. Ivy nodded. I don't think this is making the animals stronger, Bean said. No, I guess it's not, said Ivy. Bean shook her head. Bummer, I thought we were on to something. Me too, said Ivy. It might work if all the people in the world tied their hands together. Especially Katie, said Bean. But I guess making people weaker won't make animals stronger unless the animals know it. Now we have to think of another idea, said Ivy. They heard the slap slap of Katie's sandals as she zoomed along the sidewalk. We have two ropes and we're going to string and we're going to string you up, she yelled. Prepare to meet your maker.